Hello and welcome to another episode of Theology Thursdays. Today we're going to be looking at the human person and the Catholic understanding of the human person. Now you might ask, well, why do we look at the human person in theology? Well, the reason is, obviously, theology is the study of God, the science of God, the bringing human reason to God. But we also need to see theology in terms of the human person and how we relate to God. You know, how do we relate to God and how does God relate to us? And in order to do that, we need to look at the foundational text of creation and the creation of the human person back in Genesis. Now, you're probably aware that there are two creation accounts in Genesis. The first is the creation account regarding the seven days. And the second is the more narrative account of the creation of man and woman, Adam and Eve. Now, both of these texts are are essential in understanding who we are as human persons. And really, they are foundational to the understanding of the human person and Western civilization. So let's, let's look very briefly at what these two texts tell us about the human person. So the first is where God creates the human person in his own image and likeness. So God has created, you know, all the universe. He's he's brought order out of chaos in those first few days of creation. And this is just a foundational text for, obviously, for the Jews and for Christians. And and it's a fundamental teaching about creation, that, that creation is ordered The creation has an order to it. And the pinnacle of this creation is the creation of the human person. God creates humanity. And God creates man in his image and likeness. And male and female, he creates them. This is where we get the idea or the the fundamental teaching of the Christian understanding of the human person, that we're created in the imago Dei, in the image and likeness of God. So what does that mean, to be created in the image and likeness of God? Fundamentally, it means that the human person is a spiritual being like God. And as a spiritual being, we can know and we can love. That we have an intellect and that we have a will. We can know and we can love. This is fundamental to understanding who we are, knowing and loving. So in this second creation account, we see that we're created in freedom, not as robots, but as free human persons. And this is really, really important, understanding our dignity as persons created in God's image and likeness. That God loves us so much that he allows us the freedom to love him in return or to not love him in return. And we see this in the narrative of this second creation account of the tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God places in the middle of the garden and says to his to his children, to his son and his daughter, Adam and Eve, you know, enjoy this garden. You know, enjoy creation. And and Adam and Eve are in perfect union with each other. They're in perfect union with God. They're in perfect union with the whole of creation. They're fully integrated in this garden. But God just says, you know, I've created you in freedom and here's this tree right in the middle of the garden. Just don't eat from that tree. Just enjoy everything but of this tree, don't eat. And we know that this great drama of the original sin of of Adam and Eve, that they do take the fruit from this tree and eat it. And so this has grave consequences to who we are as persons. We're created in God's image and likeness. We're created in freedom. We're created in such an integrated way. But this taking of this fruit results in our disintegration. Yes, we're still created in God's image and likeness. We're still knowing and loving beings, but we're disintegrated. No longer are we in complete union with God. No longer are we in complete union with each other. And no longer are we in complete union with the creation itself. We've become disintegrated. And this is really crucial in understanding who we are. It's a really probably the most obvious truth of our faith is original sin because we experience it every day in terms of our own selves, this sense of disintegration 
with, with ourselves, with others, with God. So this is crucial in understanding who we are, this idea of freedom. So I just want to say a word about freedom and understanding freedom correctly. So freedom is a good thing. Everyone acknowledges, you know, it's great. Freedom is something that's good and a value we really want to uphold. And everyone believes in freedom. That's just a truism. But we have wildly different understandings of what freedom is and what the goal really of freedom is. So if you were to ask anyone, you know, well, what, what do you mean by freedom? Well, I, I believe in freedom. You know, I really, I really want to be free. But not a lot of people really understand what, well, what, is, what is freedom? What does it mean to be free? So the classical Christian understanding of freedom is the two dimensions. And we, in a sense, we see them right there at the beginning of these creation accounts. That God creates us in freedom that he gives us free will, this ability to choose. We, we associate that with our image and likeness because it's part of the human soul, that we, we can choose things. So we, with our intellect, we recognise that something is, is good or bad. So, and then with our will, we either choose it or choose not to do something. And this is part of who we are. It's a gift. Freedom is a real gift. A freedom to, to choose, to do something. And in some ways, this is a freedom from things. So it's a freedom from restriction. And we all really believe in this, that we all want to be free to, to live our lives as we want to live them. This is a basic underpinning of you know, democracies and, and liberalism, is that you know, we want to be free. And that's part of it. That's really tr truly part of the Christian understanding of freedom. But it's not the whole story because freedom must have an end. It can't just simply be freedom for freedom's sake. Freedom must be connected to the truth of who we are, created in God's image and likeness. Yeah, we can be free and God's created us free, and free in that sense to, to not choose God. But that's not real freedom. That's slavery. That means we end up, in a sense, just loving ourselves totally to the neglect of others, to the neglect of God and to the neglect of the world. And ultimately that leads to slavery. It's a, sort of the great paradox, you know, the, the more free I am in this sense and I want to really exercise it and just be whoever I want to be, we end up enclosed in ourselves and imprisoned in ourselves. True freedom is a freedom for. It's, it's, it's freedom from, yes, but it needs to be pointed towards something. It needs to be pointed to towards the good, towards what is true and what is noble and what is beautiful and that's God and we're created in God's image and we're created to be drawn back to God and that's where we need to exercise our freedom like that and this is you know classical term for this is is the freedom of the saints that the saints were completely free even if they were enclosed in a Carmelite convent where they couldn't couldn't see anything of the outside world we'd say oh they're in prison no they were radically free to love God and to love the world and, and they are completely free in God for eternity because they've chosen to be true to their image and likeness, namely they're created in God's image and likeness. So I hope you've enjoyed that, that quick discourse on, um, on um, the human person and the Christian understanding of the human person. And in these next few episodes, I want to just explore some of the um, some aspects to do with with this idea of freedom, particularly to do with morality and virtue and how we can actually become truly free. Um, we really value any questions that you may have regarding um, these topics and, and you know, I'd be happy to, to try and answer them. So please leave, leave some uh, questions in, in the comment sections below. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel um, and also um, please check us out on, on our website, um, particularly if you want to find out more about Camping College um, we teach theology here, we teach the classics here, we teach philosophy and history and literature. Um, and these texts, which are fundamental to Western civilization, are really at the heart of, heart of our curriculum. So please visit our website and we look forward to, to seeing you next time.